I'd like to say we are having a workshop today and our leader that is doing it is Kenneth. So uh, thank you very much. Good 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 afternoon everybody. My name is Kenneth. I'm a grateful recovered hey, alcoholic. Kenneth. Hey Kenneth. And uh, I, I say all the time that the day is a great day to be sober and that I'm only sober by God's grace and his mercy. That I'm not stupid enough to think that I'm I'm not stupid enough or dumb enough to think that I'm sober on my own power. I say that to get that out the way. I want to thank all y'all for showing up. And I definitely want to thank y'all for, you know, contributing and bringing some food. Because, you know, that's what, what this thing is all about. Food, fellowship, and fun. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what it's all about, you know. So I want, to, I want to say that I appreciate y'all coming out. That we uh, was doing these workshops for about seven or eight years before the pandemic, right? So we had to cut it, cut, cut it out. Uh, <clears throat> And they generally dealing with topics from the textbook. It's a 12-step sponsorship workshop. And this topic today is the creation of a sponsor. That is the topic. Uh, this, to make sure that nobody get thrown off behind the word creation. You know. We don't create the person. The word create in this sense means to bring into existence something that wasn't here before. Which was the sponsorship in the person. So when we say the creation of a sponsor, we don't want nobody to get thrown off. <laughs> Y'all yeah, understand what I'm saying, right? <laughs> don't get thrown off on this. So, uh, uh, something I want to point out because it's going to be very important. First of all, on the board, we have this word called altruism. It's sometimes spoke of in the rooms, but it plays a much more important role than what's spoken of. That word, altruism, it comes from the, uh, the French Derivatives, I think the word is altrui. Evelyn is an uh, expert in those things. Altrui in French means others. And the Latin root word from that is other people. So altruism, dictionary definition, means the, the selfless thinking of others and having a concern for others rather than self. But the root word of it. It's made up of those two words, altri, alter, uh, and altri. It's others and other people. And that's not accidental. That's, it's not accidental at all because we got a whole chapter called Working with Others. Working with Others. And Dr. Silkworth, in his letter, in Bill, in his letter, well first before I point that out, it's something I want to bring out because Susan told me that this topic is too important to rush through it. She said the information is, 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 is critical. It's, the information is, is important so don't rush through it. So I'm gonna, I have to ask you all to be patient with me because I want to take my time in this presentation because it's important especially for those of us that's endeavoring to work with others. Or those of us who have the desire to work with others. It's very, very crucial. The creation of a sponsor, they said not, not everybody is effective one on one. We know that, right? Everybody don't, don't go for the sponsorship deal. We know that already. Because people say it to us in rooms. Not everybody is effective on one on one. For those, there are many other avenues of service. We know that. However, in working with others, the focus is exclusively centered on the person going through, then taking somebody else through. That's the chapter called Working with Others. The chapter Working with Others is not focused on what you can't do. It's focused on what we can do. Understood? Would you repeat the word you just say? Which one? Both. 
in working with others, the focus is not centered or concentrated on what we can't do. Like I can't work with this person for this reason or not. I can't do this for this reason or not. It's not focused on what we can't do. It's focused on what we can do. Working with others is focused on the person who's been through the steps taking somebody else through. It's focused on that. In other words, let's simplify this. Once I'm working with somebody and I done took them through the steps and then they call me because they got problems. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. I say, well, who are you working with? They say, well, I gave this person my phone number. Or I gave this man my phone number. He never called. And uh, this one said, I said, I didn't ask you who you were not working with. I asked you, who were you working with? <laughs> y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. So the focus is, is, is glued on, on those who can. Like I said in the beginning, we know that there are those who don't. But the big book ain't focused with that. The 12 and 12 might come in and say that after some years. They, they got some experience. But the big book ain't focused on that. Y'all got that, right? All right, so... Uh, at that time, they dealt with mostly low-bottom drunks. What we would call first-class alcoholics. And doing that was crucial to their own recovery. Y'all remember when Bill went met Bob? He told him, I'm not here to help you. I'm here to help myself. It was crucial to their own recovery. In the doctor's opinion, the doctor said that he witnessed Bill working with others and impressing upon them that they must do likewise with still others. He was impressing upon them that they must do likewise with still others. He was impressing that upon them in treatment. In treatment. Bill was not trying to create sponsees. Bill was trying to create sponsors. Impressing upon them that they must do likewise with still others. That's a person trying to create a sponsor, not a sponsee. Right? So... They said, the doctor said this, that work Bill was doing has become the basis of a rapidly growing fellowship with these men and their families. This, that working with others, has become the basis. And you know, they told us, what well, we got done is Pat. How you feeling, Pat? I'm they, good, man. What's going they, on? they told us that working with others is the foundation stone of your recovery. Working with others is the foundation stone of your recovery. And he actually set me on his path. Because that's who took me through. And I'm still following his suggestions, really. In, in uh, working with others, I'm still following that. And as a result of that, I've been happy, joyous, and free. So, working with others is the foundation stone of your recovery. They tell us that recovery begins with one alcoholic talking to another. Now, that I got that out the way, and we talked about uh, Silkwork witnessing what Bill was doing. This is something that I want to bring out. In the spiritual experience, most of us are familiar with the spiritual experience, because most people who come to workshops and big book studies, most of them, are interested in growing in understanding and effectiveness. That's the only reason why we come here. Because we're trying to grow in understanding and effectiveness. You know, everybody ain't going to be working with us, but some of us are. And that's the reason why we come here. In the spiritual experience, Bill was given, uh, not Bill, but they would write, the, the writers was saying and explaining that they didn't intend to cause the impression that we were supposed to have a spiritual awakening all at once. Y'all remember that? It, uh, he said, it, even though that people erroneously came to that inclusion, that was not our intention to create that inclusion. Y'all remember that reading that in, uh, in, the, in, in, in the spiritual experience? Answer me. Yes. yes. Okay, well, yes. 
Well, Bill was not apologizing when he said that. They was not apologizing because he said this. Upon careful reading, it shows that the personality change sufficient to overcome alcoholism has manifested itself among us in many forms. So the people who got that impression evidently was not carefully reading. Because he said upon careful reading, it shows. <laughs> so when we read it, or those who read it and have those impressions back then as well as now, we have people today that are still wondering when I'm going to get my spiritual awakening. When is the light from the master's road going to hit me? When is the burning bush going to happen? Right or wrong? That's what they're saying in the room. When am I going to get mine? They haven't been carefully reading. And part of this process is going to show how important it is to carefully read what this book is telling us. Hard work starts off by telling us Rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. They use that word thoroughly. It means something. It means a lot. Because at the same time it's suggesting that if I don't thoroughly follow the path that I won't get this experience. It's at the same time suggesting that. Thoroughly. That word thoroughly, I don't have to go through the definition of the dictionary because you people look intelligent to me. <laughs> you know, we got a good grasp. What does that thoroughly mean? <laughs> thoroughly, somebody got the dictionary definition of thoroughly? Careful. Meticulously. Painstakingly. Cautiously. With careful observance. Ca Thoroughly, carefully. Leaving no leaf unturned. No page unturned. Leaving no stone un unturned. No page unturned. Carefully. That's, they say who has thoroughly followed out. That's so important in the creation of a sponsor. That he or she thoroughly follows this path. And for those who say, well, I can't work with others, or I'm not going to, uh, I won't be able to do that, or I just, you know, for those, and for the people who say, well, different sponsors got different methods and ways of taking the steps, right? Mm -hmm. Different sponsors got their own methodology for taking somebody through the steps, so everybody don't take people through the steps the same way, so, you know, to each his own, each group is autonomous, hold your point. They say that. So each sponsor is autonomous too. That's what, that's what they say in the rooms. But that's not what Bill said. Bill said, Bill didn't say. Rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed my sponsor's path. Bill never said that. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. He, he never said that. So, what we want to see how crucial it is to uh, be thorough in it, they gave us in some in, in, uh, areas of it. On page 87, on page 87, now this is in the step work, right? This is the path. He said, we are careful never to pray for our own selfish ends. Remember? Mm -hmm. That's when I'm praying. Page 86. They say, but we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection. Page 65. They say we went back through our lives. Nothing counted but thoroughness 
and honesty. When we were finished, we considered it carefully. Talk about the fourth step, right? Yeah. When we were finished, we considered it carefully. Page 85. If, if, if we have carefully followed directions, we have begun to sense the flow of His Spirit into us. Page 75. When I go home from doing the fifth step, I take the book down from the shelf carefully reading the first five proposals. Right? Mm -hmm. Page 75 again. Carefully reviewing what we have done. So, this word thoroughly lines up with the word specifically. What means? It also lines up with precisely to show others alcoholics precisely he could he, he could have said to show other alcoholics how we have recovered he didn't say that he said to show other alcoholics precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book and they say if you if you're the kind of uh, alcoholic or addict that's suffering and you wants to get over it you may be already asking yourself what do I have to do y'all remember that question and they never tell you what you have to do. They say, we shall tell you what we have done. Right? <laughs> we shall tell you what we have done. He never tells you what you need to do. He said, we shall tell you what we have done. And the purpose of this book, to answer such questions specifically. When you look at the fourth step chart. If you turn to the fourth step chart, I'm going to show y'all, most people miss this. There's an entire paragraph at the top of the chart. Can somebody read it? On our grudge list, we said opposite. Stop right there. Somebody else read it. There's an entire paragraph at the top of that chart. Somebody read it. We were usually as definite, as we were usually as definite, definite, exact as uh, as this example. Did it say that? What did it say? We were you. We were usually as definite, definite as this example. They use that word definite, specifically, precisely, and they come in later on and use the word exactly. Bill said thoroughly. So. That's showing how important it is to thoroughly follow the path. Leaving no stone unturned. In, in, in step five, they question us again. Am I trying to make mortar without sand or some stuff like that? <laughs> uh, Y'all remember that? Yes. You know, I got to, I, 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 I got to ask myself, was I, did I leave anything out? You know, and only when I can answer with satisfaction do I then look at step six. Okay. So these steps is made to be taken in that order precisely. Only then can I get the full benefit of their experience. That's why they said, rarely have we seen a person fail who has started following our path. So they evidently laid out a path for me to follow. And that's all I had to do. I'm thankful that my sponsor took me through according to the textbook. Because I question things. I question lawyers, prosecutors, judges. Because I never finished eighth grade. So when they're using all these highfalutin words, I stop the, the situation. I don't understand that. Explain that to me. I say that, and it, well, don't you have a lawyer? I say he he fired. He worked for y'all anyway. Mm -hmm. 
You see what I'm saying? So I'm not trying to, I put all of that in the record. I knew one thing. They got a stenographer typing down everything that's said in the courtroom. If y'all have been in the courtrooms, right? So I know I can come back later on on a writ. <laughs> if they make a mistake, and any time the judge give me, I can give it back. That's the way I thought. How else did I survive with over 65 felony arrests? How, how else did I survive with over 100 juvenile arrests and over 100 adult misdemeanor arrests? I had to know the law. Mm. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> I'm not made to be a caged bird. <laughs> <laughs> Just not. So, <laughs> so, so let's, let, let's, let, let's look at how we showed and demonstrated how Careful, we're supposed to be in taking this process. Now, let's think about what the doctor's opinion told us regarding this word, altruism. Because it altruistic only appears twice in the big book and not at all in the 12 and 12. That word altruistic only appears twice. So I would think that that's one of the reasons why this process has been uh, not so understood as far as that word is concerned. In the doctor's opinion, Bill said after the doctor's first letter, after the doctor wrote the first letter, Bill came behind him and said, though we work out our solution on the spiritual as well as the altruistic plane. We favor hospitalization for the alcoholic who is still jittery. Bill said, though we work out our solution on the spiritual as well as the altruistic plane. That's what he said. He called it an altruistic plane. P-L-A-N-E. Now, when Silkwork carefully read the book in his second letter, after he carefully read the book, after Silkwork carefully, remember, Silkwork never talked about God. Silkwork never mentioned steps. Even though he read the book, he never mentioned the 12 steps. And he never mentioned God. Because that's not his Ex parte. Y'all understand what that means? Because it sounds good. That's why I said it. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but what he did do, he referred to the well known stages of a spree. He said, emerge and remorseful from the well known stages of a spree. One of the meanings of stages is steps. So he he compared the problem with the steps. And he said its behavior is repeated over and over. Y'all remember that? Behavior is uh, my attitude or action towards, especially towards others, towards other people. How I treat behavior. That's, this behavior is repeated over and over. So, Silkway said, after he carefully read the book, since he couldn't mention the steps and he couldn't mention stages in uh, conjunction with the process, because he's dealing, he dealing with a lot of lawyers, professional people, and if he starts talking about steps and spirit and God, they're going to shut down. Mm -hmm. So when he looked at the book and saw what was going in the book, this is what Silkway said. He said, we doctors have found nothing which has contributed more to the rehabilitation of these men than the altruistic movement now growing up amongst them. Right or wrong? Yes. Right. Bill called it an altruistic plane. Silkwork called it an altruistic movement. 
That's what Silkway did. Silkway called it, why did he call it the movement? What did he see? Mm. He saw something. See, because he, he was given expert testimony anyway. That's why they called him expert. He, you know, convincing testimony, I'm sure. They call he was an expert, but this is how he saw it. This is how he saw uh, our solution. Though we work out our solution on a spiritual as well as an altruistic plane, Silkwork saw the altruistic as a movement, and he's talking about it without mentioning the steps. This is how. This is what he did. He's, this is what he did. In the steps, remember, Silkwork is commenting on the book. Remember, we got to, can't forget that. He's giving us his opinion on the book. He said that. It gave me a sense of real satisfaction when I was asked to contribute a few words on a subject which is already covered in masterly detail. That's what he said. Masterly detail, detail means the small elements, the small words. That make up a magnificent whole. That's where the detail is at. In the small words. That I think I know the definition of. But I don't. Y'all understand. What I just said. Yes. I remember. I remember my mother. When we talk about detail. I remember my, my mother. When <laughs> we were real young. She had a picture of the last supper in the house. Sitting in a. Front the living room. Y'all familiar with the picture of the Last Supper? Yeah. They got Christ and his 12 disciples eating dinner, whatever they're doing. You know, this is a big, big picture she had sitting in the living room. This is the only place in the house where my mother would never cuss. She would never cuss in front of that picture. She cussed everywhere else in the house. <laughs> and I came up looking at that picture all my life. And I had... Six brothers and six sisters. And not one of us can tell you what's on the plate. Mm. It's the detail. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been looking at the picture of the Last Supper for years. And I can't tell you what meal is they serving. What's on that plate? <laughs> Y'all ever heard the devil's in the details? Y'all ever heard that? <laughs> So Silkway said it that way. Silkway said, the book is already covered in masterly detail. I'm just acknowledging it. That's what he's doing. So this is what he said. In far as this plane is concerned, we have to look at what Silkwork is pointing us to. You remember when the doctor first said that? Bill said, we work out a solution on a spiritual as well as an altruistic plane. We got that already. After the doctor read the book, he said, what we, we, we talking about, he, we feel that after uh, many years experience that we have found nothing that has contributed more than this altruistic movement. That's what he said. Now, in step one and two, when we take step one and two, there's no writing required. There's no action required. Not in Alcoholics Anonymous. Not in Alcoholics Anonymous. Officially, there's no writing, no work in step one and two. According to the way they did it. We learned we had to concede to our innermost self that we were alcoholics. This is the first step in recovery. Done. Step two. No action is required. As soon as a man can say, we emphatically assure him he's on his way. That's step two. As soon as a man can say, not right, not doing no work, as soon as a man can say he believes or is willing to believe, we emphatically assure him he's on his way. And at the same time, if we can emphatically assure him that he's on his way, then if he does not believe or he is not willing to believe, he doesn't go anywhere from there. Ain't nothing you can do with him. He's not emphatically on his way. He's stuck right there. <laughs> Y'all got that? Yes. That's why they made it, went through a whole lot of work to try to get a person, because a lot of people just wouldn't believe, so they went through a whole lot of work 
to get a person to at least become willing to believe. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that there's something greater than you. And, 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 and that helped us out in helping a whole lot of people. Because y'all know we deal with atheists, agnostics, and all kind of uh, disbelieving, disbelieving the inclined people. Right? So they raised the ball. That's what they did. Now in step one and two, as soon as I make these concessions or these, accept, I accept this. Remember, no action. But when I get to step to three, man oh man, things start happening. In step three, remember, we're connecting this. Don't forget this. Don't forget this because it's very important. Everything I'm about to say is connected to this. And this altruistic plane. So I don't want nobody to get lost. Everybody, what I'm getting ready to present is connected to what Silkworth was talking about and what Bill was talking about. Y'all remember the idea on page 30 that evolved into a great obsession. And then it evolved into an illusion and a delusion. Mm -hmm. Well, that idea did not sit still. That idea moved. From a thought, when I nurse it, it becomes the overriding thought. Pat called it a bully idea. It overrules all other thoughts, including the thought of God. Then it becomes an illusion, and then it becomes a delusion. And all that takes place before I drink. Y'all heard? After that process has happened, I drink. Well, the solution, the solution... On, uh, not the solution, but when they located God on page 55, they said actually we were fooling ourselves. For deep down inside every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, that idea didn't sit still either. It moved. Mm -hmm. they, when they said the fundamental idea, they start talking about God, and it evolved into a great reality. Where there are no illusions or delusions. Mm -hmm. That's what I take the person I'm working with through when that question come up in step two. Where and how will we define this power? We locate where the power is deep down in every man, woman, and child. And then we find out the next thing is how do I get that on page 47. As soon as a man can say he believes, or is willing to believe, we emphatically assure you you're on your way. Once we get that out of the way, now we, it's, we, we, we move, we're moving to step three, where I get a new employer with a capital E. Mm. Notice, I get a new employer on page 63, I believe, with a capital E. But my job description is not given. Mm. Y'all heard that? <laughs> I have a new employer. So some things are starting to happen. He said, established on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves. Our little petty plans and designs. More and more we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. See how the altruistic plane is moving? It's already moving in step three. I'm coming up out of selfishness in step three. You know, I'm going to say a prayer. Take away my difficulties. That victory over them may bear witness to those I would help. Y'all can see how Silkwork saw the altruistic plane moving through the steps. Remember I said everything is connected to this altruism. All of it. Because that's the ultimate, the ultimate qualification of a sponsor. He's going to have to have it. If, he, he won't be able to do without it. He said more and more we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. The plane is moving. Relieve me of the bondage of self. Then they say that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help. My help that I get from God is directly contingent 
and connected to those I would help. So when I ask this prayer, this is the reason why I wouldn't say it. That's step three. I wasn't about to do that. Because I understood what, what, it, what it was implying. I wasn't about to get ready and, and make this holy lie to God. <laughs> that I'm going to help somebody. <laughs> when everybody in my whole lifestyle was either a Vic, a Mark, a Trick, a Jane, a John, or a Dope. So I wasn't about to play with God from that perspective. So I did what they did. They said, we thought, well, before taking this step, making sure we was ready, I did the same thing. All right, I get this new employer. I become less and less interested in myself. The altruistic plane is moving. It's moving. They said, this was the triumphant arch through which we pass the freedom. They're giving us a whole lot there. Because the arch come from the word ark, A-R-K. That's what it comes from. And an ark is a covenant. Y'all ain't heard of the ark of the covenant. I know y'all ain't heard of the ark of the covenant. All right. So what's in the ark if it's not the law? You see what I'm saying? So, <laughs> this is the triumphant arch. To, it's a, a binding agreement. Take away my difficulty. That victory over them may bear witness to those I would help. Once I go through the process, and God remove my difficulties, and I refuse to help somebody else, my difficulties come back, doubled and multiplied. Because it's a principle. It's a binding agreement. That's what it is. I get all of this in step three. Now, he is the father. We are his children. That's saying a lot right there. I'm entering into the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Right there. I'm entering into on, on, on that scale right there. He is the father and we are his children. There's a whole lot of things that's going on in step three. That's why they call it the keystone. Because it ties in and locks in everything else. Everything else is hinging on step three. The whole program is hinging on step three. Next, after we took the step, we realized that we had resentments which was poisonous to our spirit. And we saw that the resentments must be mastered, but how? We couldn't wish them away any more than alcohol. So we realized that the people who wronged us were perhaps spiritually sick. That was our only out. This got to be a sick but That's the only out that I have. <laughs> Though we didn't like their symptoms and the way these disturbed us, they, like ourselves, were sick too. Now, prayer. We ask God. Now, this is a selfish, self-centered individual talking. That's moving through the altruistic plane on different levels. Getting from one stage to another. We ask God to help us show them the same tolerance, pity, and patience that we would cheerfully grant a sick friend. This is a sick man. How can I be helpful to him? That's in step four. Y'all see that? How did altruistic plane? Dr. Silkworth saw that. He said, God saved me from being angry. Thy will be done. The plane, again, is moving. See, we can't be helpful to all people. But at least God will show us how to take a kindly and tolerant view of each and every one. That's, again, Silver looked at this when he read the book. He saw it. Even in step five, if sex is very troublesome, <laughs> we throw ourselves the harder into helping others. Now you can see why a whole bunch of alcoholics working with a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they told us. They said it. Yeah. If sex is very troublesome, we don't throw ourselves the harder into a woman. We, the harder 
<laughs> into I, I said that y'all into helping others <laughs> so, so they, they're coming at us from all angles for, from this altruistic plane they say they conclude the fourth step by saying this if we have been thorough remember that how we started off right we have begun to learn tolerance, patience, and goodwill toward all men, even our enemies. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And that's, a, that's, that's a conclusion right there, step four. Again, in step five, we can look the world in the eye. Now, step five, more spiritual than anything else. Though we work out our solution on the spiritual as well, as well as the altruistic plane. In step five, I'm going to feel as though I'm walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe. Y'all right? <laughs> I can look the world in the eye. See, step five, both spiritual, that's why we, we're using both the spiritual as well as the altruistic plane. Step six go by so quick that it doesn't even conclude the matter. It just glides into step seven. <laughs> they don't even tell you when they finish it. They just and, and, and they just say we have then completed step seven. Like they ain't never complete six. <laughs> That's how quick that is. You travel along a highway and sneeze, you miss it. <laughs> That's how quick that's gone. <laughs> see now in step seven, they tell us you want to see how this plane is moving. He said, I pray. That you now remove from me every single defect of character that stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. That's the altruistic plane is moving through the steps. Y'all following what I'm saying? Yes. Again, a spiritual as well as an altruistic plane. In step eight. They're going to send me back inside myself to look and note the harm I've done to my fellows. Right or wrong? Right. This is my fellows, other people, right? The altruistic move. The word altruistic comes from the Latin and French meaning other people. That's where it's coming from. In nine, going to prepare me to make amends and correct the wrong done to my fellow human beings. That's an altruistic plane moving. Pat used to say, he said, the personality making the amends in nine ain't the personality that caused the harms in eight. Something changes. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's, what he, that's the way he be bringing it out. Our real purpose in nine is to fit ourselves to be a maximum service to God and those about us. Y'all see how that altruistic plane is moving? Silkworth saw that. Now, I, I was telling some people about this plane. See, because they got a lot of all kind of religious people that become in the alcoholics anonymous. See, this plane ain't no new plane. This is an old plane. They used to sing about it in the church. No higher plane that I have found. Will Lord plant my feet on higher ground? Y'all ever heard that? Huh? <laughs> this is an old plane. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? It ain't nothing. That's right, Troy. Ain't nothing new. <laughs> Miss Heaven, you done heard it? You see what I'm saying? It's an old play. They tell us they borrowed these principles from the fields of religion and medicine. Didn't they tell us that? They told us that. You know, uh, that's why, what do you think they got this idea, uh, this is not an overnight matter, it should continue for a lifetime. Where do you think they got that from? They got that from the scripture. What prophet that you know that God ever sent, ever resigned? From the job. <laughs> not one of them. Y'all see what I'm saying? It's not an overnight matter. You know, Samuel, I don't know if y'all are familiar with these things. Samuel was an old man. Walking 
on a stick. <laughs> and he walked into a palace and told Saul, you fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> Make it clear to you. <laughs> Pardon my expression, y'all. Yeah. He didn't say it like that. <laughs> 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 he didn't say it like that. But y'all get the idea. He yeah. said, uh, again, in other words, just playing moving. They said, we're going to realize that no matter how far down the scale we have gone, we will see how our ex experience can benefit who? Others. 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 That altruistic plan is moving. Uselessness and self pity will slip away. We'll lose interest in selfish things and gain interest mm -hmm. in our fellows. Y'all see this altruistic plane moving? Mm -hmm. Silkway saw it too. Our whole attitude and outlook upon life would change. Mm -hmm. You know what they used to say about that attitude? Mm -hmm. It's not your aptitude that determines your altitude, mm -hmm. but it's your attitude. Y'all remember, remember that? Yeah. See, in step 10, the same spiritual... Now, Bill had another name for it. Bill called it a rocket. Y'all see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> remember, you, remember, he was rocketed into a... That, then, he, then he used catapulted. So, so, so you got to see how, how Bill is fixing and tying all this in. You know, that's what he's doing. In step 10, the same spiritual altruistic plane has brought me into the world of the spirit. This altruistic plane don't just stay in one dimension. It moves. Didn't Bill say he was, went to the fourth dimension? It's a dimensional plane too. It moves. It travels through worlds. Brought me into the world of the spirit. If I harm anyone in step 10, I'm making a man's quickly pronto in pronto order. Y'all see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Something has changed. If we have carefully followed directions, I, I read that earlier, we have begun to sense the flow of his spirit and we develop this vital sixth sense. Mm -hmm. But it said we must go further. Again, the plane is moving. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are carefully carefully listening. <laughs> I say it again. If you carefully witness what you just finished hearing and witnessing is the creation of a sponsor. This is how a sponsor is created. Y'all hear what I'm saying? This is how a, a sponsor is brought into being. He must develop these altruistic tools, these, these altruistic characteristics and qualities. Because that's the only thing that's going to uh, make him effective. Nothing else will. He said, in step nine, I'm going to sacrifice my feelings, my emotions, my attitudes, my anger, my frustrations, my pride, everything in order to fit myself to be a maximum service to God. I'm willing, I'm willing to go to people who done wronged me that I done wrong and set all that on the side, my pride and everything. Y'all see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In order to fit myself to be a maximum service to God and those about me. In step 10, that we, we talked about that. We done cease fighting, you see it. Anything or anyone. The plane gets to a point where every night in step 11, I'm going to be asking myself, were we kind and loving toward all? <laughs> <laughs> right or wrong? Yes. Right. Yes. Were we thinking of ourselves most of the time? Yeah. Or were we thinking of others, right? Others. That's what the altruistic means. Of what we could do for others, of what we could pack into the stream of life. Even when I'm praying, I am to make no request for myself only. But only if others can be helped. Y'all see how this altruistic plane is moving? Yes. See, by the time I get to step 12, life then took on a new meaning. I get to practice all these spiritually, altruistically principles on a daily basis. And that, dear brothers and sisters, is how a sponsor is created. Now, look, let's, let's go further. 
Let's look at how do I have it here? Right here. The tie-in. What's the result of all that? What happens as a direct result of all of that? What did Bill do? He went to Bob. He went got Bob and carried the message to Bob. Right after that, what did Bill and Bob do? Man they got a man on a bed. Where that picture at? Right here? Yeah, there. This picture here is so important because this their pad. The man on the bed just come out of a drunken stupor. <laughs> Bill got six months sober. Mm. Dr. Bob has two weeks sober mm. in this picture. So where do we get that idea that a sponsee ain't supposed to work with nobody until he done got a year? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. In the That's not their pad, right or wrong? Right. That's not their pad. So, Bill and Bob, if you really look at this picture, and you really look at a, one of them colorful pictures, Bill and Bob is sitting in front of this man, and their heads is below this man's. This man's head is slightly higher than Bill and Bob's. And Bill and Bob is slightly bowing their head towards that man. Y'all ever looked at that picture and seen the details in it? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they see their own salvation in him. Mm -hmm. That's where they see their own salvation at. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go into the book that's in Bill's hand. We're going to leave that out. That's for another workshop. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that, we're going to leave that out. You know, because we all know Bill didn't, was in the Bible dumper. He didn't carry a Bible around with him. But we do know one thing. That there's only one book that the big book mentions by name. There's no other book that the book mentions by name but one book. Y'all know what the name of that book is? The Varieties of, the Varieties of Religious Experiences by William James. That's the only book that the big book mentions by name. And when you open up that book. When you open up the book, the real name of that book, you'll see what it is. For those of you who have opened up that book, any of y'all ever got that book? It's a study in human nature. That's exactly what that book was all about. A study in human nature. Just like this altruistic claim. And Bill described the selfishness and the self-centeredness of every human person. Not the alcoholics. When he say each person. When he say uh, uh, being convinced that self, uh, being I, I have to be convinced that's, uh, how you put it? Manifestation of self. When he was given these on, on his page, he was given these uh, 61, 62, these description of he. He is like this. He is like that. Uh, he, he, he always trying to run the show. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. He used the word he 17 times on page 62 or 61. He used the word he 17 times. He's talking about the self-centered individual and the nature of him. And he got that from that book. A study in human nature. So you know, Bill. They, 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 he, he, well, he admitted he didn't come up. He, he didn't say he came up with nothing new. But let's look at what happens as the result of a person going through the steps. In the twelve and twelve, they make this statement about the newest of newcomers. The only time that word is used, newest, the newest. Y'all ever heard of that word? The new S? You know, that, 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 that's almost like saying something more than just new, right? Because you got the new and the new S. That's the only time they use that word. Bill said the new S of newcomers find undreamed of rewards when he worked with his brother that's blinder than himself. 
And then he discovered that by the, the, the divine paradox of this kind of giving, you know, he has found his own reward. Whether or not his brother has got anything or not. Y'all heard that? The newest of newcomers. As soon as a person gets through the process, he should start working with others. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. According to Alcoholics Anonymous, not Kenneth. <laughs> Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. And not some sponsors. Remember, rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed my sponsor's path. <laughs> you know, remember that? <laughs> That's not what it said. This path. So, uh, hopefully, we didn't got something out of this. And uh, hopefully, the, 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 some of the good ladies will be uh, able to uh, uh, help with this food. And we got CDs, y'all. And we got the CD. We got a CD of uh, our last workshop. We got the CD of that thing we did uh, for y'all at the at Lamb Lighters. That's all in there. Those CDs are free. If you want to make a donation, you can. All the food is free. We just get donations so we can keep the CDs coming. You know, so we can. Uh, so we tape this. Even this session is taped. Not video. <laughs> y'all understand what I'm saying? Not video. Oh, yes. But it's taped. You know, uh, so that people that's not here right now, years later, can get this message. Because this is a 12-step sponsorship workshop. You know, I'm glad to see my sponsor in here. You know, because generally I'm sitting down listening to him. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> but uh, anybody got any comments? Anybody want to? I got any questions? Anybody got any comments? Question. Hey, Louis. You say that the word totally. And then now you say that um, so it just is a sponsor uh, thing. So if I not sponsor somebody I not totally follow just back. Y'all heard the That's question? The word, yeah. the question. Did y'all hear the question? Yes. Pat, you want to answer that? Yeah, my name is Pat. I'm a real alcoholic and addict. <laughs> and yes, sir, you are totally correct. If I don't work with another addict, I'm not working all 12 steps. So I'm not totally following that. Okay, well, now I'm working with my sponsor. And when you finish, you got to go work with somebody else. And if I don't, I'm not totally following this path. You're not. That's the right. That was just a question. It's not my case. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I have a comment. And I, I like that you connected the spiritual plane with the uh, fourth dimension. But the plane is there. That's, that's God's plane. That's the spiritual plane. We get on it and we start, we surrender and we develop a conscious contact and live this way of life. And the reason you said the plane is moving and growing, the person was being transformed by living this way of life sober. And he's on the plane and staying on the plane and enjoying the benefits of growing and understanding and effectiveness. The joy of living is the theme of the 12 steps. And I think it's been a fabulous explanation of altruism. We give. We, we used to be takers. We would come in and we learn to love others and give, whether I want to or not sometimes. It's not always convenient. Did y'all hear what she said? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now let's tie this whole thing in with these qualities. All right? With, with, with these qualities. We didn't show how we developed these qualities. So on page 18, remember, they said, though we work out our solution on a spiritual as well as an altruistic plane. The solution. Now this what's read right here is in there the solution. Y'all hear that? Yes. There ain't nothing accidental about this book. They said, the ex-problem drinker 
who has found this solution, who is properly armed with facts about himself, can generally win the entire confidence of another alcoholic in a few hours. Now, in a few hours, how long does the average meeting last? One hour, One hour right? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So when he's saying a few hours, he sure as hell ain't talking about a meeting. They're talking about one alcoholic sitting down with another alcoholic. They're not talking about a meeting here. Because a few hours, it takes, with those of us who can work with others, don't it take some time, a few hours sitting down with them? <laughs> they say, until such an understanding is reached, little or nothing can be uh, accomplished. Now we come with the nine most effective conditions that an altruistic person or a sponsor must have. And I'm going to read these nine conditions. Y'all read with me because a lot of people is unaware of this. That the man who is making the approach has had the same difficulty. Count. One. That he obviously knows what he's talking about. Two. That his whole department shouts at the new prospect that he is a man with a real answer. Three. That he has no attitude of holier than thou. Four. Nothing whatever except a sincere desire to be helpful. Five. That there are no fees to pay. Six. No access to grind. Seven. No people to please. Eight. No lectures to be endured. Nine. These are the conditions we have found most effective. That's the nine most effective conditions for sponsorship. And it's found right there. And all of those conditions is tied up in that. The state of altruism. Evelyn said the plane was something that we get on. Thing about that is we don't get off. You you heard? We don't. This one plane once you get on it. See, this plane ain't like the friendship plane. Y'all ever heard? Come on, get on the friendship train. Y'all ever heard that? <laughs> <laughs> well, they had a friendship train at the of some of, See, uh, that train can be derailed. See, this plane here can't be hijacked. This spiritual altruistic plane can't be hijacked. They had a man years ago named Zig Ziglar. <laughs> Y'all ever heard of Zig Ziglar? Yeah. Zig Ziglar said this. You can have anything in life you want if you only help enough other people get what they want. Mm -hmm. He said you can have anything in life you want if you would only help enough other people get what they want. Mm -hmm. The key is to always find what does this person want? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I satisfy this need? Ain't that what business people do? Mm -hmm. And they have everything in life they want by making sure we get what we want. That's what they do, right? <laughs> y'all can sit right where y'all at and uh, uh, join me in a moment of silence, followed by the serenity prayer. And then after that, the food is out there. God, uh, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change things I can. And, and the, the wisdom knows that.